today's show, Moving Home. What can the Crows learn from other clubs? Is there still a place for showmanship in today's game? And the forgotten player in the Crows ranks. Hi everyone and welcome to The Crows Show, brought to you by Optus, I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith and Mark, The Crows moved to a new headquarters in North Adelaide, is certainly gathering some momentum. Yes, and Adelaide is not alone in developing a state-of-the-art facility, West Coast and Frio have already done so. And Brisbane and Hawthorne are also in the planning stages. So, what can Crows fans expect and how will the wider community benefit? The focus of our work at the moment is on finalising our master plan and you know, we're still a few months away from completing that but there's been an enormous amount of work that's been done uh, and what I'm pleased about at the moment is I think that we can deliver a facility that both meets the needs of the community, the existing stakeholders and, and obviously those of the, of the Adelaide Football Club. So I remain super excited about you know, the journey that we're on but there's still a lot of work to do. The West Coast Eagles glittering new $60 million home in Lath Lane was opened up to fans today. I think it's you know, really important as we you know, look to finalise our master plan that we look at some of the examples uh, of, of work that other people have completed recently and the most recent trip was to Perth. I looked at both the Fremantle Football Club and, and West Coast new facilities. Um, Fremantle has more of a community feel as part of a large aquatic and community centre. Uh, West Coast uh, is attached to an existing you know, local football club. The purpose of the visit was looking at both how, how those facilities operate, but also at the flow of the building. So how do we create the best connection between our medical staff and our players and our coaching group and our players? And importantly, how the community can interact best with our players and, and the football club, because we want to make this a, a place where our fans and the general community feel comfortable that they can come and have a coffee, watch the boys train and, and interact with the club in the best possible manner. No firm date has been set for the move from West Lakes. Now, much has been said about the Crows list in recent weeks, but there's one name that's barely mentioned, Andrew McPherson. Drafted in 2017 from Woodville West Torrens, the 20-year-old has had limited opportunities in the Sandful because of persistent injuries. Thanks to Revolution Roofing, Andrew talks about the frustrating start to his AFL career. It was a great experience this year being able to get some continuous footy under the belt. Obviously there has been a couple of interruptions but um, yeah I think just taking that first step and getting whatever it was eight or nine games um, strung together was was good for my development and obviously a lot of fun as well. Quick kick that comes from Straw and the handball came from Jacobs and he's popping through. Great group of boys out there at the moment obviously you get the leadership of some of those older guys coming back as well. The other young boys in the back line have been awesome they've um, really got a lot of talent to show and you can see they're developing other aspects of their game now as well as far as their defensive side, some of their uh, leadership and communication and um, I think long term those guys will be really important players for the footy club. Pretty disappointing obviously, um, didn't sink in to me straight away and I think a lot of the boys weren't too aware of it being late in the game so um, no, nah, they've rallied around me and the, the boys and the coach has been awesome, but obviously, yeah, disappointing. So for the rest of the year, I think it's touch and go as to whether I'll get back. Um, obviously, it also depends on how the boys go for the rest of the year as far as finals and how that all pans out. So it gives me a bit of, bit of something to work towards and, yeah, hopefully can get a bit more footy in before the year's up. Everything, everything is all right. Andrew is contracted until at least the end of 2021. Now, when Port youngster Xavier Dersma struck his archers pose recently, he generated quite a bit of reaction. Mark, we couldn't quite find any pictures of you in a similar se celebration, but is there a place for extrovert personalities in today's game? Well, look, I loved what he did. And, um, of course, people will say, yeah, the, there's a time and a place. But it really is just exuberance and excitement. That's what he was displaying. And I'd hate to think that we start to take that out of our game. Now, um, it certainly was in, wasn't in my kit bag. But there were plenty of players that I did play with who were quite exuberant. And you fed off them. So I hope that continues. So would you say some of that reaction's been too harsh? Absolutely. I think we want to see personalities of our players in games. And... 
there's been plenty of great players over the journey who have showed their emotions and and, um, and given us an insight of exactly what they're thinking. And I think it adds to the game, if anything. Yeah, speaking of some of those players, the likes of Ackermanis and Kappa, uh, what about your teammates amongst that group? Do any stand out for their celebration? If we go way, way back, Andrew Jarman was probably the one who first comes to mind. But look, over the journey and even more recently, I think Eddie Betts, some of the times when he's kicked those great goals and he's grabbed his Guernsey and done things like that, I just think it just shows how much it means to them. And mm -hmm. as you said, you could flick to the crowd and, and take a shot of the crowd when, they, when you see the players celebrate and the crowd absolutely love it. Yep, love seeing a bit of personality, don't they? All right, when we return, one youngster with heaps of personality has Brody Smith searching for answers. Well, the Crows have just one remaining home game for 2019 against the Pies in a fortnight. Tickets are available at ticketech.com.au. Two years ago, Lockie Murphy was selling Brodie Smith's Guernsey in the Cromania store at Westlakes. That was before he was selected in the rookie draft and joined the AFL ranks. Now, of course, he shares the locker room with Smithers, so you'd think they'd know a bit about each other. With the help of Thomas Farms, let's find out. This week I'm joined by Lockie Murphy. Let's see how much I know about Murph. Hey mate. Thanks for having me. No worries. Righto. First one. If I was to die tomorrow <laughs> and I could have one last meal, what would it be? Uh, Palmer. Yes. <laughs> you got it right. <laughs> Even said it the way you'd say it. Yep. No, that's good on you. I have two dogs. One in South Australia oh. and my home dog back in Melbourne. Yeah. What are the names of both of them? I oh, know Johnny. Oh, and I've seen plenty of the other one on social media. Robin. <laughs> Robin. Sassy. Sassy. Oh, probably should have called it Robin. <laughs> oh, I have a mum and a dad. What are their names? Yep. Robin and Pete. Robin. No, it's a Rod <laughs> and Rachel. Oh, yeah. What draft pick was I? Uh, rookie pick, 41. Oh, 38. Oh, it's close. Yep, it's you were, close. but not right. What high school did I go to? Oh, it wouldn't have been a very good one. <laughs> Where'd you go? I have an old grammar school. Uh, okay. Here we go, is that it? <laughs> Thanks, Amy. <laughs> That is a work in progress for sure. Okay, now it's fair to say Don Pike's golf challenges this season would all fall into the amateur category. But the next to take him on has spent time on the professional circuit in Australia and Europe. Thanks to Optus, let's see if Pikey meets his match. Hi guys, welcome once again to the Optus One Hole Challenge. Uh, I'm joined today on the little par three here by the head teaching pro of the Glenelg Golf Club in uh, Sarah King. Welcome along Sarah. Thank you very much, thanks for having me. Thank you for hosting us on your beautiful course and I'll get you to talk a bit more about that in a minute. Uh, your golfing history, you've, uh, you've formerly been on the tour and now back here in teaching role. Yeah, absolutely. I played uh, on tour for a few years, about four or five years, one year uh, over in Europe um, and then yeah, fell into the coaching role and wouldn't have it any other way. Beautiful. So you're helping all the members here at Glenelg uh, improve yep. their game and yep. see themselves get better. Yeah, absolutely. I do a, a various members here, juniors. Um, I've also done a bit with Golf Australia as well, travelling uh, with some of their teams. So, yeah, it's good variety. Good. Well, I'll get you to go first and you yep. can look at my swing and give me some feedback <laughs> and give me something to work on. All right, all right you're away. We've got about 105 metres here today. Looks pretty good. Yep. On the green. On the green. Always a good start. <laughs> Just, just stayed on there, I think. Yeah, it's good. So, uh, Sarah, how did you find the tour? Is it, uh, is uh, it a glamorous life everyone makes out to be? No, it certainly isn't. Um, I mean, obviously, if you if you get a good run or you, you get a win under your belt, it's, it's pretty good. But for me, playing over in Europe, um, you know, if you weren't sort of top 12 or 15 every week, you really weren't making any money. So it was pretty difficult um, for me, but, you know, absolutely glad I did it and great experiences out there as well. All right, well, here we go. We've got two on the green. Yep. So uh, <coughs> now it comes down to the business of putting and getting in the hole. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a misread. 
<laughs> Soft and weak and to the right. That's not going to get it done. <laughs> Nice three putt, beautiful. <laughs> Just let your answer. That's good. That's good. <laughs> That's tough school. Thanks very much for joining me, Sarah. <laughs> we clearly hit the greens a good start, but we need to do some work on our putting. Maybe work you can give me a putting putt. lesson before yeah. we finish up. We can Sounds tell good. you that came up. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thanks, Thanks. Cheers. That would have to be Pikey's worst putt of the year. Stay with us when Mark returns. Players try their hand at saving lives. Learning to be an elite sportsman involves much more than the training and tactics of AFL football. All draftees have to undergo a first aid training course to equip them with the skills to deal with a range of life-threatening emergencies they may confront at any time. If someone's unconscious on the ground because they've had too much or whatever it is, just by simply rolling on the little side, might that save their life? Yep, yep. The first few boys did some first aid training today. We had Andrew come in and um, we covered off everything from um, CPR, um, snake bites, spider bites, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it was really exciting. And then the other hand on top, however you feel comfortable. The holistic education program here at the Crows is um, sitting behind the footy program, giving the boys life skills. So what we do with the first year education program is we connect it with the AFL Players Association program and we obviously give them a Cert 3 at the end of their first year. So some of their accreditations they can take with them into the broader aspect of life. So put the mask over when you're doing the breaths. Put the mask, the mask, the mask. So pointy bits to the top. Hold it down nice and firm and the head needs to go right back or it ain't going to work. My favourite part of today was probably learning the difference in CPR between uh, adults, um, kids, all that kind of things and infants. So there's a bit of a difference there but yeah, the whole thing was really good. Will Hamill, Will Hamill's crafty with a bandage and, and he was pretty good. He had some good knowledge about some, some venomous animals as well. So Will Hamill was probably a surprise back at today. It's good to have those skills now and um, if there is um, an opportunity to do it, I, I suppose we'll be well equipped now. They're skills that everyone should learn. Now, life in the sun is certainly agreeing with former Crow Jared Lyons. The 27-year-old midfielder is playing the best football of his career since transferring to Brisbane after two seasons with Gold Coast. With the help of Flight Centre, Jared recalls his six-year stint at Adelaide, where he played in the shadow of Dangerfield, Sloan and Thompson. Now Betts took it out of Merritt's hands and gave it over to Lyons, and he gets in on the party, the sub kicks a goal. Early days, it took me a long time to establish myself as a player. There was such a good side in Adelaide, you really had to earn a game um, early days, which was probably a good thing. Um, I was never really gifted games, I had to work really hard to get them and I sort of played 55 with Adelaide and then 30 with Gold Coast and now with Brisbane. It was a bit of an indifferent feeling, only playing my seventh game or something here, but the club was amazing, they sort of welcomed me like it was, I've played all 100 here. I love being in Adelaide and, and obviously I, I owe a lot to the, to the Adelaide Football Club. Um, I spent a lot of time there, so I think it was about six years and, and met a lot of people and a lot of good coaches and a lot of players that I still keep in touch with um, and learnt a lot of basic footy, my, my knowledge and, and things through that and, and there was a lot of good players that I played with, likes of uh, Paddy Dangerfield I spent a lot of time with, um, Scotty Thompson, Rory Sloan, Eddie Betts, who's a good friend of mine. And Slides has just been outstanding as Jared Lyons kicks his second goal. And I didn't think we'd probably be, I knew it'd be good but I didn't think we'd be flying like we are now so we're sort of taking everything in our stride and it's uh, been an amazing start. The way we go about things is but there's the footy side of things but there's also the off field and I think as a group we're really close off field which relates to a strong performance on field and I think everyone's just enjoying their footy at the moment and there's a strong belief within the, the group. Well, he certainly learned from the best here in Adelaide. 
Now, if both of South Australia's AFL teams miss the finals, there are significant implications for the Sandful. Here's the advertiser's Rhys Humphrey. If the Crows and the Power fail to make the AFL finals for the second year in a row, we could be headed for a very quiet September in Adelaide. Or could we? With a month to go in the AFL season, uncertainty continues to surround SA's two sides and whether they'll qualify for the top eight. But there are no such concerns for Adelaide or Port Adelaide State League sides, with both teams playing good footy and seemingly headed for the major round. What may once have been the SANFL's worst nightmare, an AFL reserve side storming its way through the competition to take the Premiership, could now become one of its biggest draw cards in September. Imagine an SANFL finals series with Glenelg, Norwood and Sturt trying to hold off two AFL heavyweights at Adelaide Oval. Either way, there'll be huge interest in the State League competition in September, even more so if the two AFL teams aren't going in the big league. Thanks, Reese. Stay with us. Still to come on The Crow Show, the young player who carries the weight of big expectations. When the Crows' turn came to make a first round draft selection last year, it had no hesitation in grabbing Chase Jones. Taken as pick nine, Chase wasted no time making his AFL debut, lining up in the season opener against Hawthorne and scoring a goal with his first kick. Thanks to Toyota Good for Footy, we learned that he starred as a youngster in Tasmania's Senior League. What a moment for him. Time to weigh it all up. It was an amazing experience, like that first game, like yeah, you run out and the crowd's going nuts and like I got goosebumps and yeah, I don't remember a whole lot from the game, but yeah, it was unreal. It's Chase Jones doing the chasing, O'Connor taking over the line, the youngster did well. So I played all my junior footy, so from under nines through to under 15s at Longford Junior Footy Club and then I moved to um, Launceston Footy Club after that with the state program, had to be a part of the state league. In my draft year, I only played about five games. It was good, I played some good footy there, which was nice, and good to have a last stint before being drafted. With pick nine, the Adelaide Crows have selected Chase Jones from Launceston. Draft night was amazing, it was unreal. Um, I had family there and made it that much more special. Um, the leading up to it was a very nervous one, that's for sure. And then when my name was called out, it was just a whole buzz. It just went, all the media and stuff, um, getting into the first Crows Guernsey was a bit surreal. <laughs> Well, the 2019 Toyota Good for Footy raffle aims to raise $1 million for grassroots clubs across Australia. Do your part to support local footy and buy a ticket. Go to toyota.com.au forward slash AFL raffle and help raise some serious cash for local clubs. And Toyota also helps us find our crow in the crowd each week. All year we've been out and about on Adelaide Oval Southern Plaza and that's where we spotted you. If you recognise yourself, contact the club by 5 p.m. next Wednesday, have some photo ID handy and a merchandise pack from Toyota will be yours. That just about wraps up today's show brought to you by Optus. Well next week it's Bix's turn to take on the coach, don't miss it. Funnily enough that's what he said to me when I was about to tee off <laughs> and remember to keep an eye on at the Crows show on Twitter for all the latest news and also check out the club's social media accounts, Facebook and Instagram. Well thanks for your company today and Mark you're off to enjoy your birthday. Happy birthday. Well, I hope you enjoy the celebration. How did you know that? Thank you very much. It should be a great day. And of course, we'll be back again next Sunday and look forward to joining you then. That's at 11.30 on 7. We'll see you then. Bye for now.